Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and more Pal World. Today I'm covering some useful things you might not know about, important details and systems maybe unexplained, as well as some funny tricks we probably shouldn't be able to do, yet completely can and they're awesome. So let's just get into it. We start with a very ridiculous one, a simple ability to bug out a pal, leading to, you know, free kills and lots of easy DPS at very least. And the concept is silly but very effective. You run up to any pal and essentially push yourself and press yourself right into them. The idea is to get under them or as close to that as you can. The AI is so buggy that sometimes you kind of get under the pal or even under the floor a bit and that breaks the enemy pal's AI. This leaves them completely exposed to, well, free DPS. They can't even fight back so this is absolutely nuts for taking down a pal early on or at least setting up for an easier capture for free. This somehow works in a variety of pals too, even flying or big bosses, though I will say it's a lot easier to do this with a bigger pal as your target to actually squeeze under them, but the environment can help, like say you're on a hill. You can get under them because they'll be slightly above you on a hill or environment like that. It's as simple as running up and sliding and crouching in there, pressing in and under until they go static and bug out and stop fighting at all. If you go harder and like really try to push into them, I've had many cases where it causes the pal to sort of fly through the air, being shot off because the physics are, I guess, so confused. But yeah, if you're looking for a simple way to overcome some of the tougher fights in the game, certain bosses you're dealing with, or maybe you're just underleveled against, this is certainly an effective strategy. I'd like to credit Swanee Plays Games for posting about this. They claim to have been the person that found this, and that's why I first saw a clip of this. So let's take advantage of this while we still can. Speaking of taking advantage of things while you can, there's this very effective trick for moving massive piles of material around around your base or as far as you'd like. Now it's no secret that with all the farming and materials in this game, you end up over encumbered. This unfortunately leaves you absolutely unable to move. You're just doing that ultra slow walk, especially if say you're in a base and all you're really trying to do is move a bunch of materials from one storage container. Maybe it's at the other end of the room or something. So you end up putting up with a slow walk just for a moment. Well, there's a couple tricks you can use to make that experience a lot better. For example, there's this glitch with moving item stacks without being weighed down by them. All you need to do is take the material stack and kind of highlight it, interact with it, pick it up. In this state, you're going to drag it and put it wherever you're going to move it. Maybe you could move it into another slot in the storage or move it over to you and your inventory but while it's kind of highlighted or picked up it's in an in-between state it's not really in the container anymore and it's not yet in your inventory which means it weighs nothing at all. We could be talking about literally 9,099 stacks of wood or something, weighs an absolute ton, and yet in this trick, it weighs nothing at all. You just have it selected and close the storage screen that you were just looking at. You'll still have the material stack being highlighted on your screen. And as long as you maintain that highlight, you can still like at the same time, turn, walk, sprint, jump, slide, as if you don't have the items at all. With that then, you can transport these massive stacks of materials that would normally be heavy as hell and awkward to transport easily. And then when you reach whatever you're going to put it in, like another storage box, you can open it as normal, drag it in, it's easy as that. So definitely a lifesaver of a glitch, but might not stick around forever. So as an alternative choice for being encumbered with the movement, I would recommend the grapple. There are different kinds of grapples, right? The higher the quality, the shorter cooldown. When you're over encumbered, you can aim and drag yourself around as if you're not. For an average green grapple, I think the cooldown is about eight seconds, which isn't massive, but certainly a weight, especially when you're walking slow when overweight. But there's another very easy trick to remove the cooldown of the grapple. So to reset the cooldown, you just unequip the grappling gun and then re-equip it. It resets the cooldown. So if it was on seven or six seconds left after you've just used a grapple, then you take it off, put it back on. There is no cooldown. You can do it again. In fact, you can do this by the time you've landed or like flown over there. Like while you're flying, you can take it off and put it on and be ready to go the moment you land. And I can do it so quick that I can even interrupt the current grapple I'm doing. Of course, this isn't just nice for while encumbered movement though. The grapple is awesome in normal gameplay and now you have a trick to completely remove the cooldown. Hopefully this trick sticks around for a while, especially if they do remove the no weight stack trick, but we'll see. Next, did you know that you can actually reach level five work skills with your pals? Work skills are vital to automating different tasks or importantly, gathering. So you don't have to do it so hard like in the early game. Once you actually have a nice pile of pals, you can set up a base or many to have pals work and generate what you need. Each pal comes with different work skills or maybe even multiple work skills that they're going to be good at. If you have a higher level, of course, it's going to be better. These range from levels one to four normally whenever you find a pal. And each level makes a real impact on how fast it does the thing. But 
this only becomes more true when we consider the fact that there is actually level 5 work skills in the game. And the reason you might not know that, or just didn't see it before, is because it doesn't happen naturally. You have to use a PAL condenser to sacrifice PALs to power up one specific PAL. If said PAL has level 4 work skill right now, and you level it up using that system, you push it from 4 to 5, which is the real cap of these work skills. Now that's not easy, it requires a hilarious 116 PALs of one kind, sacrificed to make that one specific PAL better using that condenser. Specific PALs have level 5 potential, not all do, but it does mean we can get a range of work skills to level 5 and therefore make their efficiency even better. To best generate 116 PALs of one kind then, you'll want to do mass breeding to target a PAL to produce the many copies of it. We have a full guide on this concept on the channel for all the details if you're interested, but for this small segment in this video, here's the best picks for each work skill and their best potential. Starting with the Kindling work skill, the PAL to pick here would be Jormantide Ignis to get your level 5 in that skill. On that note, the Watering work skill pick is a regular Jormantide. Then it gets simpler size wise, for planting you want a Lilac who's great in a lot of skills actually. For generating electricity, that's Orzerk, while for handiwork, you'll need to go with Anubis. For gathering, you want Frostilian Noct, and for lumbering, you're actually out of luck for a level 5, since it's not possible in the game currently. Still, level 4 on a work skill for that is still valuable, so your best picks for that will be something like Wumpo or Wumpo Baton. Next, very importantly though, we have Mining, that's going to be Astagon, or Blasm Up for your options for that. For Medicine, you also can't get level 5 right now, but Lilian's still a great option, you can get level 4 from that, so two skills at once. And then we have transporting, which again would be either Wumpo type as an easy choice. And finally, the cooling work skill, that just needs to be a Frostalian. But yeah, that's the basics and meat of the info to get going with. Again, we have a full guide on that topic, so please check that out if you want to. Moving on, a cool detail you might not have realized to quickly mention is about the fruits you can gather, the ones that you can get new skills and apply them to pals with. There's loads of different types, all the elements the pals might have, right? But as it turns out, any fruit skill can be applied to any pal of any element, completely unlike Pokemon where, you know, the same restrictions do not apply. This means, as I show here, you could take a water-based pal and give it some kind of fire ability that will actually work. People who min-max their pals do this in regards to, say, electric-type pals most of all, because electric type pals usually don't have great base stats. So a simple trick here is to take a different kind of pal that does have strong base stats to work with. Then you just take specific electric fruit and apply those to your pal, turning it into an electric pal that just has better base stats to rely on. It's obviously understandable that people wouldn't even think to try that, since Pokemon moves are much more selective and clear with who and what can use them. But pal world being pal world, you can just do whatever you want. So here's a very good trick that both Cotton and Josh wish they'd known sooner. You can quick revive your pals. Say you're in a fight and your pal gets taken down. Normally you take it back to your base, maybe put it in the box and start a 10 minute recovery timer. But did you know that if you put the pal into the tab below, that you know, pals at base tab, they spawn physically in. Now, naturally they'll be laying there knocked out with one health, but if you've got something nearby to lay the pal on, like a bed or whatever, other pals in the base will come rescue them. Basically that means picking them up, moving them to a layable item, them like a bed and then that knocked out pal will appear on the bed sleeping with their health flying back to full. The moment they're healthy you can go back to the box, put them back in your party, fresh and ready in say 10 seconds rather than 10 minutes. Which is an absolute lifesaver compared to awkwardly waiting out that timer. You can also place a bed right by the pal box to avoid other pals even needing them to carry somewhere far to speed it up even more. Lastly for today, did you know that Pal World does in fact have an IV system? Yep, the dreaded or loved IV system, depending on your perspective from Pokemon, is here in Pal World. But fortunately, it's nowhere near as important or even impactful. And that's good because it's surprisingly difficult and quite punishing. IVs are the individual values, right? Stats assigned to each pal, just like the Pokemon IV system, at least in concept. These numbers can be found on your pal in the stats section. We're thinking health, attack, and defense, right? But attack is split into melee and ranged attack potential, which is not really explained or represented in these stats in game, so quite difficult to even see. Thankfully though, IVs are not that complicated to understand at a base level anyway. You have a pal that exists, right? It's given some sort of stats to work with immediately upon spawn, so that's whatever health, attack, and defense that it's been set with. It could have rolled with a potential low or high on each of these stats, and that's its IV. Of course, a higher value pal is one that spawned with better stats. The reality of Power World is that a high roll pal only really gets about a 10% increase to the effectiveness from, say, an average pal spawn. Most pals spawn in with roughly 50% effectiveness on their stats, so the average is quite likely, and that's good because it means you're unlikely to ever really get a bad pal 
It just means you're also unlikely to get a good one. But it does mean you can hunt for perfect IV pals. But with it not being like a massive increase, it's not exactly something you need to be pulling your hair out and worrying about. Unless maybe you're just a perfectionist. Knowing perfect pals exist and being generally aware of that system should at least help you can check the stats and see how they are. But like I said, I also wouldn't overly worry about trying to make it happen. Especially with how RNG and even if you're trying to like breed in the IVs to a better pal, it's very unlikely to succeed. Things are likely to change in the future though. This is an early version of the game after all. But if you want to try it and know all the details, the true numbers, resources to refer to, you can also check out another video guide by Cotton on this topic. But they have it hopefully a pile of interesting and useful things to know to make your experience better if you guys have any other topics or tips related to the concept please let us know in the comments until next time then i've been hollow you've been you thanks for watching Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye